Hello lovely people who cannot sit at home, thank you so much for joining me. This is the part 2 of the very exciting video where we're heading to North Bay and Sudbury. So the first part, the North Bay part, is posted already, so check it out after you see this video because the two cities are very close to each other, they both have so much to offer, but I'm separating the videos because what if you just want to go to one or the other? And of course, as per usual, let me talk about my books. I wanted to tell you about my new weekend getaways road trip journal. This just recently came out on Amazon, it's one of my books, it's all about weekend getaways, and I'm gonna link all of the information down below. And I also have, of course, my regular Ontario road trip journal, which is the spring and summer for daytime tripping and my fall winter if you would like to go on a day trip in fall or winter so please check out those books and without further ado let's go so the first stop i actually wanted to be the sudbury airbnb so this is the night after we drove from north bay and i'm gonna link this airbnb in the description down below i cannot give away the address but it is about 15 minutes from downtown sudbury Inside is a gorgeous space, a huge TV, very beautifully decorated and the most amazing view you can possibly have. And this place had two double beds or queen beds, I don't remember, but basically the four of us were fine to sleep in that space. It's a fairly small house, but really clean, very nice. The price is really good. And just look at this. You have your own um, exit to the water. I definitely took advantage and I went for a swim. <laughs> the water was exceptionally warm and clean, highly recommended. It. It's not very deep, so definitely make sure to take a dip. Here is already we're prepping for the sunset. So the second stop is Salute Coffee. When we were in Sudbury, this was a Sunday. So a lot of places were closed. These guys were open and I'm very happy because they're great. They had a number of freshly baked items. What struck our curiosity was the Beats muffin that they had over there, the very dark colored muffin. And then we had a bunch of coffees. I think I got a London Fog. Over here is how it looks inside, very beautiful. Here's the caramelly drink that uh, I think my brother's fiance had. And over here is the beet muffin, but it had a good amount of chocolate, so it tasted amazing. And here in the bathroom, the absolute coolest Canadian art piece that I've ever seen, loved it. Okay, number three is the big nickel. <laughs> You look demented. <laughs> Over there is my brother having far too much fun. So quickly reading from the Wikipedia. Big Nickel is a 30 feet replica of a 1951 Canadian nickel located on the grounds of Dynamic Earth Science Museum in the Greater Sudbury. And it's the largest depiction of a coin, which is pretty cool. And it seems like the origin of it was uh, in 1963. Ted Sylvia, who was a fireman, basically submitted for a Sudbury Star as a contest, asking Sudbury residents how the city should celebrate the up upcoming Canadian centennial. So that was his suggestion, and as I understand, uh, it went well. And if you can also see, the air quality is pretty bad. This is because of the forest fires. This is not permanent over there. It's just, uh, just the day that we were there. So the step number four is the Valley Copper cliff complex. This is interesting. This is not theoretically a spot. Uh, I actually suggest there is a place called Italian Club, which is, I think is an Italian kind of like a restaurant. I'm gonna link the location down below. If you go there, you get the bigger view of this. So this is Ico Superstack. With a height of 381 meters or uh, 1250 feet, it is the tallest chimney in Canada and the Western Hemisphere, and the second tallest freestanding chimney in the world after the uh, power station in Kazakhstan. I thought it looked really cool and surreal, so definitely wanted to check it out, and this thing is massive. So I do highly recommend you check it out. Step number five is the ca Canada's largest mural. So the story about this building is that this is actually an old hospital. And as I understand, in 2019, uh, the owners of the hospital, they hired an artist, his name is Risk, to paint the largest mural on the 80,000 square foot building on the Paris Street. I couldn't really find the meaning behind this, but it's a color wash and he also added some abstract elements to it as well. 
It is definitely pretty cool to look at and around the building is also different artworks. So if you have time, go for a walk around. It is a pretty long walk because you have to go along the street. So the next stop is the Bell Park. So we parked over there at Grace Hartman Amphitheater and then we walked. The pink line is how we walked, but the orange line is where the most beautiful boardwalk, you need to check out that boardwalk. Here's us walking at first, this is the pink line. While walking here, realize that this reminds us of BC, like something like Vancouver. Just the space of it and there's so much water. There are a few spots to sit down and just a really beautiful park. Over there, there's a view of the Science North, which we are actually going to head to today. Here we are at the boardwalk. The whole thing is a boardwalk, but this, but the portion over there is uh, elevated. That's why I kind of specifically, this is the orange part that I highlighted because it's just really beautiful with lots of rocks. Highly recommended. And the entry to park is free. The parking was also free over there where we parked. Over here, you can also take the William Ramsey boat. I think it goes from like, I think it, it goes like two times a day. Over here, there are some hours. I think it's about $20. It's a really nice way to spend the day. We didn't have the time. Here's me climbing up the uh, rocks that were over there just to check it out and you know what the view was really beautiful I really liked it and over there is the science north which is gonna be our next stop so yes top seven science north we were debating should we go should we not because none of us are really that into science but then after reading that this is like the best science museum in the world we have decided that you know what we need to check it out so the first stop is the dinosaur exhibit. I think this is a like a temporary exhibit, but it's so amazing. I had to show it. Everything moves, everything is so realistic. They make the sounds, the lighting is really cool. There's of course some history about when they lived. It was it was amazing. That's a cool looking thing. Over here you can also dig out some bones, so this is interactive, there's sand and you can just, you know, start brushing it, brushing the sand away. Very cool, especially for the kids, but you know what, this was interesting for me too. Absolutely love this. <laughs> you get to take a picture in a dinosaur egg, who doesn't want that? There was a butterfly conservatory, like us, it was fairly small. But the thing is, is that that day they even had a poster saying the butterflies are not very active. This was the most impressive thing. This is called Fin Whale. This is actually a real thing. It kind of spans, I think, three or four floors vertically in the museum. Uh, it was just, I loved stuff like that. Overall, I love the architecture of this museum. This was the most adorable thing. This porcupine, whose name is Maple, she came back from her little walk up the stairs and now the uh, caretaker is putting her in her spot. Uh, we talked to the guy, he's like, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty much her daddy and uh, he's very attached to her, which was adorable. She later on climbed all the way up. I don't know how she did that. That was very impressive. There is also a Canadian beaver. Never seen them up close. Very cool. So unique thing about Science North, other than many other things, is that they have shows that are all about science. So, so this show specifically was about air and different kind of uses of it. You guys right there. <laughs> you up there. <laughs> you people up there. You right there. There are a certain time of the day, but there is a schedule that you can check out. Who doesn't want a rock pillow? <laughs> This was fascinating. So this is a bed where you can lay on, you literally can lay on, and then you have this remote and all of these nails come up while you're laying on there. While we were there just checking it out, no adult wanted to do this, but a bunch of kids did and they totally loved it and had fun. Of course, you don't feel anything if you're kind of evenly laying down. So this was, uh, this was an interesting thing that they have over there. It's the prep station for the astronauts. I've seen people kind of spinning in there. It was really cool. Another very cool thing is that you can build a race car and then you can race it over there, which we actually did. Well, my brother's fiance did. It was very cool to see. 
Honestly, Science North has so many things. I highly suggest you go there, even if you're not that into science just like us. It was fascinating. I think we spent there a good hour and a half, if not more. Amazing space, amazing exhibit. Step number eight is Tuco Taco Lounge. This was an interesting one as well. So this is rated pretty high on the restaurants to go to in Sudbury, but it is vegan. It is taco, like Mexican inspired, but it is vegan. I'm not gonna lie, I do not like vegan food and this was also not something I really enjoyed. Though the nachos were pretty good, they were pretty much similar to what regular nachos taste like. But yes, for me, I need the real deal, I need the real egg, I need the real cheese. Sorry, sorry to all the vegans. Uh, if you are vegan, highly recommend this, you will probably love it. If you're not vegan, maybe find another place. And that whole kind of area vicinity has a bunch of different things. Lots of places were closed because this was Sunday. Beards was also really cool, different uh, donuts, and I'm sure coffee. We just kind of walked in to check out what they have. So stop nine is the downtown Sudbury and Amber Hill Gallery. Uh, the downtown Sudbury, uh, the link is going to be down below, like the location where we are at. Uh, so what they're known for is that there's a lot of different murals and, and there's even an app, it's called Up Here, it's free to download and uh, they will show you all the locations of all the art. I love this bu building specifically because it's all nice and sharp and I thought this was so cool so I made sure to check it out. The gallery that used to be in there is closed, uh, it says temporary closed, I don't know if they'll come back. I was there just for the building because I've never seen buildings so sharp, that was really cool. And here's the website with all of the murals. I didn't do all of the murals, I, I've showed you a couple of them. Um, parking in uh, downtown Sudbury is paid and we just didn't really have time, but if you have time, definitely check it out. Stop number 10 is the Hacienda Bed and Breakfast. This is amazing. I, oh my gosh, I love this place so much. To be honest, the second night, the reason why we even stayed the second night in Sudbury was just so that we can spend the night here because all of the weekend, so this is Sunday to Monday that we stayed, but all of the Saturday to uh, Sunday, they've already been sold out for the whole summer, and you can, I think, see why. This is such a beautiful Mexican villa that I've never seen in Ontario. This is ridiculous. They have a sauna, they have a pool, of course, they have a jacuzzi, and everything is decorated in this gorgeous manner, and all of the details are all about Mexico, and just, just look at the inside. This is, this is the main lobby. The lady who owns this place is amazing, really enjoyed being there. I can't say enough good things about this place. Uh, I guess I can. The breakfast was also included in the stay and the price of the stay was not even that expensive. So honestly, if you're going to Sudbury, please make sure to stay here. They are about 20 minutes from downtown Sudbury. Here's me enjoying the jacuzzi. The water in jacuzzi was perfect. Not too crazy hot, but really nice and hot. The pool water was a little on the cooler side, which I only appreciated because it was a fairly hot day, so this was a really nice, pleasant dip. The pool is deep, so I would uh, there's a section over there in front for the kitties, but I would watch out because this is a fairly deep pool. But the owners have all of the safety, all of the flotation devices in the room sort of on the left, literally like anything you can possibly want. I Again, this, this place blew my mind. I, I want to go again already. Uh, to book this space, I did have to give them a call. I'm going to leave down their phone number in the description below. And they have the coolest dog at the property. Very chill. We went for a walk outside of the property, which is you're also allowed to do. Over there, there's a bit of a pond. The whole property is actually really beautiful. They have kind of a fireplace. They have Muskoka chairs. So the stop 11 is another absolutely amazing experience. This is the owl experience with Talon and Bark Falconry. Emily was our guide and I booked it in advance. The uh, locations will be only when you select whatever it is that you want to do because they have hawk experiences and the owl experiences. So it depends on which animal you select and it depends if it's a rainy day or not. So our experience started with different feathers and just analyzing the feathers. Then Emily showed us the skulls of different owls. Those were plastic, so not real. And these kind of pellets that owls actually spit out. Whatever they can digest, such as bones, they spit out, which is really cool. I didn't know this. There are two owls and first owl is the tawny owl. His name is Rowan and he's about one years old. So with birds of prey, the only way that they can really vent heat 
is either by panting mm -hmm. or by... Rowan was adorable, very light. Uh, he didn't really fly to me, he was just sitting on my arm, which was totally cool by me. I got to see him very close, he was very friendly. To essentially just pant and keep themselves as cool as they can. He's that eating some a chicken today. Chicken, yes. Okay. It was pretty crazy how it's such a big thing and it was gone in a second. In the beginning of that video, Rowan ate the whole chicken leg in like a second. It was really cool. So over here I was also asking, are there pets? Like, how does she keep them? And it seems like they have the ability to fly, but they do come back because she feeds them. So they're very food driven, which was really cool. And another question I was asking is like, can you pet them? And the answer is definite no, because they're definitely a wild animal. And it's not something, like they're not really a parrot. They're more, they're of course more of a wild animal. Hello. Yes, yes. And by the way, both of these animals are able to see us. They totally have decent uh, daytime vision. And here's the other owl. He's a bigger guy. This is Great Horned Owl. And his name is Wariki. So Wariki, he actually did fly to me a number of times. At be in the beginning, he didn't really want to. But then we took steps, like I came closer. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have a video of him flying. But he did come to me. He did flew to me and from me a number of times, which was so much fun. <laughs> he's looking at me again. Yeah, he's just wondering. <laughs> Then next he was just kind of sitting on my arm and he was so much heavier, so much more heavier than the lighter guy beforehand. So it, it's a bit of a challenge to just hold him on the hand. Uh, but at the same time, I it's love really every second of it. So this is the next morning and here is our breakfast at the Hacienda Bed and Breakfast which was included in the stay and it was a lovely lovely breakfast. We have the chocolate croissant, we, we have sandwiches with avocado and a bit of a salad and a vinaigrette. My mom had the omelette and we had a smoothie, totally loved it and we even uh, sampled a jam made from the owner of the b and so the stop 12 is Lake Laurentian Conservation Area. I'm gonna link the location where we parked down below. This actually is where we parked at the parking one and then eventually we parked at the parking two. So parking one is at the bottom over there. That's where we saw the view I'm gonna show you over here, which are really beautiful, but there was really not much other than kind of checking out that view. Uh, there is apparently a view when you climb up, but it was closed on that day. This boardwalk is circled uh, in the map. This is the parking number two. And pretty much you park and you go slightly to the right and you get this really lovely boardwalk that kind of goes into the pond. Uh, it was a nice walk. I'm sure you can do tons more in this conservation area, but it was about to start raining. And also we needed to go because this was our day to drive back to Toronto. So we mainly checked out these two spots, but definitely there's tons more because it's a huge conservation area. Perfect for hiking and spending pretty much the whole day there. So now we're heading already back to Toronto and this is Gilly's Snack Harbor restaurant. This is located about two hours, I think we drove in, this is in Perry Sound. And this restaurant is actually off to the highway for about 30 minutes so if you don't have time don't go here because it's a little out of the way but I really like the pictures that I saw when I was researching there's a beach across from it and it already started to rain so we didn't really have much else to check out in the area other than be in a restaurant that's something you know not not outside basically the food in there though was amazing I highly recommend them for the food I had fish tacos my mom had fish and it's just it was perfection I was very surprised and here are the desserts we had, which also were amazing. Key lime pie and the chocolate uh, brownie. So stop 14 is the last stop. Definitely not the least. This is the Tower Hill Heritage Garden. Free to enter. This was about half an hour, 40 minutes from the rest. This is in Perry Sound. Their gorgeous garden. You can park and just wander around the garden, but mainly the reason why we were there is I wanted to climb this tower. In my previous videos I've climbed Dorset Tower, but for that you need to pay an entry fee and I love the idea of just checking out the view from there, especially since there is no entry fee. 
uh, the tower was fairly sturdy. It's only when you go to the higher levels of the tower, that's when it sways slightly, which I don't love. And here's me at the very top. I uh, can't say it's my favorite feeling, the, the slight kind of movement of the tower, but that's how it is. That's, if anything, that's, I think, the old towers are made like that. So the view is gorgeous. Highly recommend checking it out because it's definitely a beautiful view. So I hope you enjoyed this video about all of the amazing things you can do in Sudbury. It, Sudbury definitely amazed me. I highly recommend this road trip, which by the way can be done pretty much any time of the year. Make sure to subscribe, like and share if you enjoy similar videos such as these and check out my books and I'm gonna have them listed down below. So I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye.